What's going on folks, it's Alex here. Welcome to Mr. Alex Tech. And in this video, I'm gonna show you some beginner tips and tricks to getting started with timelines in DaVinci Resolve. Now, before we do, Mr. Alex Tech is supported by Bounce Color. So you can check out all of that LUT and filmmaking tools using the link down in the description below where you'll also get 10% off everything in store. Right, with that out of the way, let's open DaVinci Resolve and take a look at some timelines, shall we? So here we are in DaVinci Resolve, I've opened a brand new project and we've got nothing in here at the moment. Now the very first thing you should do on every project, regardless of what it is, come down to the bottom right hand corner and click on this little cog or gear icon to open up your project settings. And then make sure that you go to the master settings and set your timeline resolution. You can change your timeline resolution later on, but I'd always recommend just setting it at the beginning of every project. And then make sure always, always, always make sure to set your timeline frame rate. So I shoot and edit in 24 frames per second, so I'm gonna make sure that my timeline frame rate is 24. As soon as you create a timeline, you then can't edit the frame rate of that timeline. So you need to make sure you get this correct at the beginning of every project. So I've got everything set, I can just cancel that because we're good to go. Now we're on the edit page and I've imported some media into my media pool already. But as you can see, we don't yet have a timeline created. Now we know that because there's no tracks here. We'd usually see a video track and an audio track, but we don't yet have one. So therefore we know that we don't yet have a timeline created. So there's a couple of ways that you can create timelines. You can go up here and go to file and then come down to new timeline and then do it that way. But what I prefer to do, just because it's nice and quick, grab some media from your media pool, just drag it down here release it on your timeline and that will automatically create this timeline for you. Now at the top of the screen, you'll now see where it says timeline one. That's the current timeline which we currently have active. If we have a look in the media pool, you'll also see we now have a timeline one created within there. Now what I recommend you do here is click on the word timeline one, just a single click of your mouse and it should start flashing like so. And then you can give this timeline a name. It's really handy to be able to name all of your different timelines. It just makes life easier when you're referring back to timelines. You can have multiple timelines in one project. So it's just a nice way of being able to identify each timeline really quickly and easily. So I'm gonna call this one first draft. And there we go. We've got our first draft timeline within our media pool. And as you can see, we've got first draft at the top of the screen like so. So we know we're in that timeline. Just above our timeline here, we've got this plus and minus bar. And we can use that to zoom in and zoom out of our timeline. Now there's two other really handy icons here. This one on the far left is called a full extent zoom. So if we give that a click, it'll automatically zoom you out so that you can see all of your timeline in one go. So if you've got a massive timeline, you can just click that to zoom all the way out so you can see everything. It will fit everything into the current screen. And then this one to the right of it is a detail zoom. So if you give that a click, it will just zoom right into where your playhead is so that you can have a look in fine detail to see what's going on. So now we're gonna come down and have a look at our actual timeline down here. So you can see just the left of our clip, we've got video one and then we've got audio one. Now you can't actually see audio one at the moment. If it appears like that for you, all you need to do is hover your mouse until it changes to this icon and then you can click and drag and now we can see the name audio one. Now what I recommend you do here as well is start to rename your tracks. So this one is called video one. I'm just gonna give that a click. I'm gonna call this A-roll because this is gonna be the track for my A-roll. And then this audio track, we'll give that one click again. It'll start flashing. We can call this talking. And then we may want to add additional tracks for other things. So for videos, it may be B-roll, text, and then effects maybe. And then for your audio, you may have one for talking, one for special effects, and then one for music as well. Now that's really easy to do. All you need to do is right click on an empty space anywhere here and then you can add track which will just add a single track or add tracks where you can add multiple tracks in one go. So I'm going to click on add tracks and this pop-up will appear. So we've got video tracks and then we've got audio tracks. So we can choose the number of tracks we want to add. So let's say I want three video tracks in total and I want three audio tracks and then we can choose where they go. I'm going to leave that as it is and then hit add tracks. And that's gonna add all of those tracks to our timeline. And then we can just go through and rename them all accordingly. I won't do them all in this video, but you can get the idea. We'll call this one B-roll. And then we've got an A2 here. Let's just expand that so we can see audio two. And we'll call that one music. 
And again, it's just a nice, easy way of staying organized, having different tracks for different things. Now remember, when you're talking about video tracks, the video track on top of all the others is how they will appear. So you never want to say put text underneath a video track because therefore you won't see that text. You want the text to be on top of the video track. So if you need to reorder any of these tracks, you can do. So let's say I've got this B-roll one here. We want to just move that up a layer. If we just right click on B-roll, we can move track up or down. So we can move track up and now we've got B-roll and then we've got video two underneath. Now, just for another example, if you've accidentally created a track, you don't need it. It's not doing any harm, but you just want to get rid of it. If you right click, you can then delete track. Now, if you've created your project and by the end of it, you've got loads of empty tracks, you got a bit carried away at the beginning, created loads you didn't need. Again, really easy, just right click. You can go to delete empty tracks and that will delete all of the empty tracks on your current timeline. Right, now we can start to customize how our timeline looks. So just above our tracks here, we've got this little icon. If you give that a click, there's some timeline view options. So starting on the top row, we've got this one here to enable or disable stacked timelines. We'll come back to that in a moment. We can enable or disable a subtitle tracks, and then we can also enable or disable audio waveforms if we don't want the actual waveforms appearing on our timeline. Underneath there, we've got video view options. So this changes this sort of thumbnail that you can see on the video itself. So if you look really closely at mine, it's a film strip view, so we can see all the different parts of the video as it goes along. If we just wanted a static thumbnail, we could change that. And if we didn't want any image on there at all, we could change it to the right option. I'm gonna leave it as that, because that's how I prefer. You can also then change how your audio waveforms appear. Again, have a play with these, just turn them on and off, have a look to see which one you prefer. And then underneath that, you've got the track height. So we can just adjust the default track height for our audio and video. Once we're happy, we can just close those timeline view options. Now you'll notice underneath the title of each track, we've got a couple of different options. So we're just gonna run through them really quickly. Underneath the video tracks, you've got three icons. The one on the left is a padlock. That will simply lock the track. So if we click that, you can see this whole track will turn gray and then we can no longer make any amendments to that track. We can't delete anything, we can't cut, we can't import, it's completely locked. But if we hit play, we can still view it. So that's a way to keep things on your timeline so that you can view them within the edit, but making sure you don't accidentally make any amendments to them. Next to that, we've got this one called Auto Track Selector. Now I'm just gonna import some music to demonstrate this one. So here we've got some music on this audio track number two. Now if I was just to move my playhead anywhere on the timeline and do a Control B to do a cut, as you can see, it will make a cut through everything on my timeline. So then if I was to do another cut here and then do a ripple delete on this clip here, what it actually do is make a cut on my audio track as well. And when you're cutting to music, that's not what you want. So let me just undo that. As you can see, all of the tracks automatically have the auto track selector highlighted. So for my audio track, what I'm gonna do is just give that a click so that that is no longer selected. So then again, if I do my control B and control B, I can do these cuts here, I can delete that one, but nothing will happen to this music track. So it's a really good way of making sure that you don't accidentally make any cuts to your music. But the great thing about this auto track selector is if I select this, I can still move it around, I can still adjust the volume, I can still apply any effects that I want to. It's still an active track, it just won't automatically be selected. The next icon here is the disable video track, so we can just disable it entirely and you'll no longer be able to view it. It won't appear anywhere within DaVinci Resolve. And then go into the two specific ones on audio tracks, you've got S for solo. So this is my talking track, I've got the music playing in the background, if I just want to hear the talking, I can hit solo. None of the other audio tracks will play. We'll only be hearing this specific audio track. And next to that, we've got M for mute. So you can simply pick the different tracks you want to mute. So you can just hear the ones you need to hear. And there you go, easy peasy. Now I'm gonna shoot back into my media pool over here. And you can see we've got this first draft. Now let's pretend that I've done a really cool edit. I've put everything to my music. I'm really happy with how this timeline looks, but I've got an idea of something else which may work well. I just wanna make some amendments to it without actually messing with this current timeline. Well, there's a really cool quick trick you can do here. 
on the timeline within the media pool, just right click and then you can duplicate the timeline. So we give that a click and now we've got a first draft copy. So if I just open that one up, it's exactly the same timeline and then I can go through, I can make any changes, I can try those different techniques or different edits or effects or whatever I want to do to see how they look, knowing that if I don't like it, I can just go back to my first edit and everything is still there, ready to go. Right above your preview window here, you've got first draft and a drop down. You can see your two timelines within there, so I can just click that to hop between the two. Come down here to this icon once again for your timeline view options, and now we're going to enable this stacked timeline. Now above my timeline, we've got two tabs, and I've got first draft and first draft copy. We can click on the drop down, so if we've got multiple timelines, we can then select the third timeline, fourth timeline, fifth timeline, however many we've got, and then we can just use these tabs to hop between the different timelines, making any edits and amendments that we need to. If I don't like what I've done with this copy, I can simply right click, come down, remove the timeline, delete the selected timeline, delete, and now I've just left with this first timeline once again. And that's pretty much it. That are the basics for getting used to working and editing on timelines within the edit page of DaVinci Resolve. Now, if you enjoyed this video, do please give me a thumbs up. If you've got any thoughts or feedback, please put them down in the comment section below. And if you're new here and you enjoyed this video, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button for me. Thanks ever so much for watching, folks. Take it easy. I'll catch you next time. See ya.